Coding Dojo is a programming school that turns beginners into developers in only 14 weeks. Over 90% of their grads land jobs within three months of graduating, often making over 70k per year. To learn more, visit CodingDojo.com or click the link in the description below. Hey guys, I had a request from one of my patrons to do a video on node authentication with JSON Web Tokens or JWT. And these tokens are used to protect routes in an API. That way you can add authentication to fetch a token and then you can make requests with that token to access protected routes. So if you have a full stack application where you have like no, a node API on the back end and then react on the front end, you can make your request to log in, um, you know, do all the login stuff and then get the token back, save that in local storage or cookies or wherever you want to save it locally. And then you can use that token to make requests to protected routes like let's say to create a blog post or something like that. All right, now we're not going to build a complete API here. We're not going to implement Passport or authentication or anything like that. We're just going to have like a mock user. Uh, my goal is to just show you how to protect routes and then how to get the token and use that token to access the, the route. All right, so it's kind of an off the cuff video. Um, we're using Postman to make our requests. Uh, this is a, now a standalone, a standalone program. It was a Chrome extension. Um, I believe it's deprecated as a Chrome extension now. So that's what we'll be using to make our requests. We're using VS Code for a text editor and I'm using my VS Code terminal here. So I have an empty folder called Node Auth API. So if you want to follow along, just create a folder and then we're going to do an npm init to create a package.json. I'll just go through this uh, description. I'll just say uh, JWT example, and I'm going to use app.js for the entry point, and then just enter through the rest. All right, so now what we'll do is install our dependencies. So npm install, we're just going to have express and JSON web token, all one word. Okay, I'm also going to install NodeMon because uh, that will just continuously watch our application so we don't have to restart it um, to, you know, if we make changes or whatever. And we're going to install that globally. So we're going to do an npm install dash G and then NodeMon. All right, and then once we do that, let's clear that up. We're going to create our app.js file and let's open that file up. I'm just being fancy with the terminal. Of course, you can create it up here. So in our app.js, let's go ahead and bring in express. Okay, and let's see, we also want to bring in um, JSON web token. So that's going to come in as well name it JWT and that's going to come in as JSON web token. Then we want to initialize our app variable with express. Okay, and then I'm just going to create a just a, like a welcome route for the index. So, uh, actually, we'll do slash API and we'll put a arrow function here. And of course, we need our request response. All right, and then in here, all I'm going to do is do a res dot JSON. And we're going to send along a message. And we're just going to say, welcome to the API. Okay, so there's a simple route. And we're going to now listen. I'm going to have our server listen on port uh, 5000. Oops. And then we'll just do our console log. Server started on 5000. Alright, so let's save that and let's run node mon down here in the terminal. So our, our server started. Now we should be able to make a request to this slash API and we should get that message back. So let's say HTTP. Uh, do I have it here? HTTP localhost 5000 slash API. 
make sure it's a get request and send and we get welcome to the API. So, so far so good. Now I want to create a route that I want to protect. So let's do an app dot post to slash API slash posts. And let's say request res. And obviously we're not really going to create a post or anything. We're not using a database. I'm just going to do a res dot JSON. And we'll just do the end result, which will be a message that says post created. Okay, so we should be able to, to make that. We, we haven't protected anything yet, so we should be able to make a post request to API slash posts. And we get post created. All right, so now we're going to start to implement our JSON web token. We need a way to get the token and we're going to create a route for that. So that's going to be a login route. So let's say post slash API slash login. All right, let's put our request response. And inside here, what we want to do is we want to call um, JWT dot sign. Now, I'm actually going to open up the documentation here and you can do this either synchronously or asynchronously. If you're doing it synchronously, you can set a variable to JWT sign, pass in your payload and then a secret key, which can be whatever. And then you can go ahead and use that or you can do what we're going to do and we're going to use um, we're just going to use a callback function. We're going to do it asynchronously. So let's do JWT sign. Um, oh, I forgot to create a user. So we're just going to create a mock user. Now, usually you would make a request to this login and you'd be sending your username and password. You'd go through all your your authentication stuff here uh, with your database and then you would get your user back. So we're going to skip right to getting the user back. So I'll say ID one username Brad and let's do email Brad at Gmail. All right, so we have our user and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this along as the payload. So this will be I'll say user user. So payload next parameter will be the secret key and you can see over here JWT sign. They sent the payload here and then there's the secret key so that can be whatever. All right. And then since we're using the asynchronous version, we're going to go ahead and put a callback or an arrow function in this case. And this will take in an error if there is one and then it'll take the token. It'll give us the token. All right. So then what we want to do is just send a response. So res dot Jason and we're going to send along token and we're going to send the token. All right, we can even do this ES6 style and get rid of that. Same thing here. Since these are both the same, we can just do like that. All right, and yeah, let's save. So now we'll try and log in. So we'll go to a post request to API slash login and send. And there it is. So we get our token back. OK, so this token contains all the information we need to make a, uh, a request to a protected route, which we don't have yet. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our route we want to protect, which is this right here, this posts. And we're just going to add in right here uh, a middleware function called verify token like that. OK, and then we need to create that function. So we'll go down here. And let's just say verify token and function verify token. All right, so this is going to take in this is actually a middleware function. It's going to take in a request response and next. 
So basically it's going to run. We want to do what we want and then call next to proceed. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to get the auth header value. So when we send our token, we want to send it in the header. Okay, and we want to send it as the authorization value. So I'm going to create a variable here. We're going to call it bearer bearer header and we're going to set it to request dot headers and then we want the authorization part of it. So authorization like that and that should give us the bearer header or I'm sorry, the, the, the actual token. Now the way that this token is going to be formatted Uh, let's say format of token. So it's a it's what's called a bearer token. So it's going to look like this authorization. It's going to have the word bearer like that. And then it's going to be the token. So we'll say access token. All right. So it's going to look like that. And then we need to pull the token out of it. So we need to do a couple things down here. So first thing we're going to do is check to see if it's not undefined. So we'll say check if bearer. I can never spell this while I'm talking. Bearer is undefined. So we'll say if and we're going to use type of. So if type of bearer header is not equal to undefined. then we want to continue else then it's going to be forbidden all right and we can actually just send a 403 status so if we say res dot send status i mean you can do a dot json if you want um, res dot json and put your own message here but i'm just going to send a 403 All right, now let's just try that out. So we'll save that and we're going to go and try to make a request to um, API posts, which has the verify token middleware. And if we don't send the token, we should get the 403 status. So I'm going to open a new tab and go to HTTP. Let's go to localhost 5000 API posts. Make sure it's a post request and send and it gives us back forbidden. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. We can't access it without that to without a token. So let's go back into the verify um, token function and we need to basically take the token out of the bearer space token. So what we'll do is we're going to split at the space because it's going to be bearer, the word bearer space and then the token. So I'm going to say const bearer equals and then we want the bearer header and we're going to do dot split. What dot split does is it turns a string into an array and you can put here what you want to split it by and it's going to be a space. So it's going to look at this bearer space token and it's going to separate the two by a space and turn it into an array. So in that case, this will be the, the second part of the other second uh, value in the array, which has a one index because arrays are zero base. So this would be zero. This would be one. So let's go on the next line and let's say get token from array. So we'll say const bearer token and set that to uh, bearer with the index of one. All right, then we want to actually set the token by simply saying request dot token and setting that to the bearer token. Okay, and then we simply want to call the next middleware by saying next. And that's it. That's our verified token function. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, let me just double check this. That should be good. So now what we need to do is when we enter this 
protected route here, API post, we need to verify the token. Okay. Um, and let me actually just pull up the documentation for that. So let's see. So we already did the sign. Uh, let's see right here. JWT verify token. Right here, verify token. And then we also want to pass in that secret key as a parameter. Uh, but we're going to do it the asynchronous way <clears throat> like this. And we should be able to get the data, the payload that we passed in. So when we logged in right here, we passed in the user. We should be able to get that data as well. So let's go to our post route here and uh, let's go right here and we'll say JWT dot verify and inside here we're going to pass in the token now that token is now in that request object so we can say request dot token and then we want our secret key and then we want a callback or an arrow function in this case and this is going to take in two things it's going to take in error and then the data I'm going to call this auth data because it's basically going to be our authentication data, our user, the ID, username and email. And then inside this verify, we'll first check for an error. So we'll say if there is an error, then let's go ahead and send that 403 status. So res dot send status. And we're going to send uh, whoops, I'm going to send 403. And let's do else. Then we're going to take this res .json right here and we're going to just move this up into the else. And we'll send the message post created. Let's also send the auth data. OK, so we'll get the message post created. We'll get the auth data. Uh, we should also get the timestamp that this was created, uh, I believe. Yeah, let, let's just try that. So we'll save. <clears throat> we'll go back to Postman. Now, if we try to make a request here again, we get forbidden. That's expected. We need to include our token. So the token we got when we logged in. Now, if you had a front end app, a front end client with like, let's say React or something or, or whatever, vanilla JavaScript, you would save this token in local storage. You could also use cookies, but it, that's not really recommended anymore. You want to use local storage. And then when you want to make a request to a protected route, you want to send in a header value for authorization. So we'll say, so we'll say authorization and we're going to say in here bearer space and then the token. OK, so let's try this. We'll go ahead and click send. And there we go. Post created. We get our message. We get our auth data, which includes the payload that we sent here. OK, so when we did JWT sign, we sent the user. That's what we're getting here. And then we get this IAT, which is um, issue issued at, I think. What does this stand for? I'm pretty sure it's issued at. Uh, yeah, issued at. So you can include a timestamp, but if you don't, it'll do. It'll give you this issued at timestamp. So now you can continue to make this request as long as you have that header, that token, okay, present in your header this here. If I go ahead and I uncheck this and I don't send this header value along with it, we get forbidden. OK, if I were to change this in any way, like let's just put a one here and send, we get forbidden. OK, so it has to be this exact token. Now, another thing we can do is we can set an expiration if we want this token to not last forever. Uh, we can do that. So let's go to let's see I can make this smaller here 
we want to go to the login where we do the sign and we just want to put in some options right here so we'll put in an object like that and then in here we're going to say expires in and then we can say we can do like 30s for 30 seconds we can do minutes and this is all in the documentation Let's see so these are all the options you can use and expires in is one of those so you can do like two days you can do 10 hours you can use all those different formats so let's do 30 seconds all right now we're going to have to make another request to log in to get a new token so what we'll do is um, let's get rid of that <clears throat> and then we'll go back to our login and let's send so now we get a new token notice it's a little bigger because it now includes that expiration so we'll copy we'll go back to posts we'll put in our authorization and we'll say bearer space and then paste in our token and send it works okay i'm going to keep trying and it should expire within 30 seconds so it should not work pretty soon and you can see it's actually one of the values exp so this is issued at an expiration send again and now it's forbidden okay because it expired so you can do that as well all right so i know this isn't like the most put together thing but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to protect your routes how to get a token and then how to use that token to access protected routes and obviously we're using postman as our client but you could just as well have a react application or an angular application and use the http client there and just send along your authorization in the header with the token All right, first login and so on. Um, but of course, you're going to want to have a form submitted to log in and do your magic here to at to uh, authenticate the user, get that user, and then include that user here. Not just create one like this. This is just a a mockup. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully it was kind of it was somewhat clear. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Coding Dojo is a programming school that turns beginners into developers in only 14 weeks. If you're serious about landing a career in tech but lack the formal education or background, Coding Dojo will get you there in no time. With over 3,000 graduates to date, over 90% of their grads land jobs within three months of graduating, often making over 70k per year at tech firms of all sizes, from companies like Google to local startups. To learn more, visit CodingDojo.com or click the link in the description below.